Bell. Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And we are about two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Caroline Hyde, Taylor Riggs and Shanali Bassett counting you down to the closing bell here to help us be, take us beyond the bell with global simulcast. We're joined now by Carol Massa, Kriti Gupta, bringing together Bloomberg TV, radio, YouTube audiences to go through what has been actually a risk on feel. Maybe that Pfizer news, the new ways in which we can treat the COVID-19 outbreak, particularly Omicron, front and center for investors. Yeah, absolutely. It does feel like every day, right, guys, that we get another tool for um, dealing with COVID and finding our way forward. It's interesting to watch in the last few minutes of trading here that we're just creedy ticking to our highs of the session for the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. Absolutely. Cruise control is really uh, the name of this game today when you're talking about whether investors are even looking at investing in stocks. But look at what is trading under the hood. It's very much a defensive trade that is still outperforming. You are seeing the NASDAQ mm -hmm. outperform the s and P500. And that's going to be crucial to see if that pattern sticks going into Isn't next it week. Isn't funny Taylor? everybody says growth stocks we should run away from, but yet NASDAQ <laughs> well, continues to outperform. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting. And, and I know that Shanali, and later when we take a look at some of the sectors, it's been the discretionary that's really caught our attention and something that's coming with the higher consumer confidence data and then a slight downtick in some of those inflationary ratings. And we just had a great guest, Carol Schleif of uh, BMO Family Office, saying that some of these maybe inflationary readings have peaked. And so we might be in a better position perhaps if they happen. Yeah, absolutely. We have those reopening trades really back in full force, but you have to wonder at what point that the other retail names start to feel the same amount of love that we see as this consumer comes back. Interesting, Tesla getting some love. We'll be digging into the individual movers, but right now it has been a volume down, but market up kind of a day. And indeed, once again, S&P 500 moving more than a percentage point. I mean, I think it's been 11 out of the 18 trading days since Black Friday that we have seen such moves in excess of a percentage point. S&P 500 closing 47 and a half points higher, 4,696. The Nasdaq up more than 1.1 percent at 180 points higher. And the Dow getting a little bit of love, less so. The cyclical is not quite so in vogue today, up seven tenths of percent, 261 points higher. The Russell 2000 as well, a slight laggard versus the S&P and the Nasdaq. We're just rising on the day. 2,221 is where we close, about eight tenths of percent higher, Carol. Yeah, and let's not forget, you mentioned, you know, uh, in terms of the highs that we saw, and it is lighter volume. But we did get some economic data earlier in the session uh, about housing data that was upbeat and also consumer confidence uh, coming in better than expected for the month of December. So, Taylor, all of these little points give support, certainly, to the equity trade. And those one-year inflation head expectations, Shanali, coming down, helping to fuel some of the sectors I know that you're looking at. Yeah, I mean, some of these sectors really are all higher on the day. So we're not seeing that some are being left behind as we move along. Look into some of the industry groups for a moment with us because, I mean, consumer address discretionary was where it was at, hey? Yeah, absolutely. A more than 1% rise in consumer discretionary. And we had healthcare right behind it, really. Those consumer discretionary stocks led higher by that Tesla jump that we've been talking about. Look how now. autos have outperformed. Yeah, incredible. <laughs> but look at that. I mean, more than 6% higher there. I thought but he was done, but then Elon Musk came out and said that he's almost done. So is he not he's such a tease. He's such a tease. Happening? Let's not steal Carol's thunder. <laughs> oh, my sure gosh. I, I, I was just going to say, yeah, it's one of my wanna, gainers. I mean, it's one of my gainers. how little of a rise you have in some of those other sector groups. We're all green on the day, but we, we don't have this broad-based jump up as we see with those single-name stocks driving up some of these sectors. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get to some of the gainers of the day. I'm going to get to Tesla in a moment. i got to talk about Pfizer because this was certainly a headline we focused on today. Moving up on the news that it's uh, at-home antiviral pill uh, given emergency use authorization uh, by U.S. regulators, and this is, of course, to treat COVID-19. This stock is up more than 60% so far this year. It's up about 1% in today's uh, trade. Tesla we're talking about it a lot when it comes to those consumer discretionary. So Tesla uh, at the top of that list, up 7.5% in today's session, $1,008 and change. Top in the uh, S&P 500, top of the NASDAQ 100. Uh, keep in mind that uh, Elon did come out and say that he's, I guess, close to selling off all the shares he needed to do. Um, and this stock, you know, it's been on a tear this year. We did see, though, a pullback when he was doing all of that selling. But nonetheless, we're seeing investors come back in. And I got to mention Carnival. So many of the hospitality stocks uh, have been on a tear the last couple of days. Carnival adding another 3.5%. It's up about uh, more than 20% in the past four trading days, top in the S&P 500. Keep in mind, it was on Monday that the company was looking into the new year, saying that it expects to see a profit in the second half of next year. But it's interesting with 
all of the variant and COVID headlines that we continue to see create a lot of gains in the hospitality and leisure sector. Absolutely, in the hospitality and leisure sector, but not so much perhaps in some of the sectors that have actually been outperforming lately. I want to take a look at some of the decliners today. And at the top of the pack is, of course, going to be CarMax. Now, we've been talking about used cars and how those prices have been surging, rental cars as well. And now you're actually looking at CarMax and their earnings, blowout earnings, really great numbers. But then you look at their margins, this idea that they are charging higher prices but then to store that inventory needed to actually replenish that supply that's being selling out so fast. Well, that's cutting into their margins. That's those storage costs really weighing on the shares today. I want to hit uh, Moderna as well, dropping this, of course, Carol, in reaction to your, one of your stocks, Pfizer, mm -hmm. essentially getting clearance from the FDA. Now Moderna actually sinking to session lows on that headline because remember when people want mm -hmm. that exposure to biotech, they pick Moderna, they pick Pfizer, and it tends to be a trade-off between one or the two. I'm going to wrap it up here with Amazon oh. Should he gloss over Amazon? It closed oh. higher. I was just going to oh, say, if Romain no. was here, oh, he no. would be giving you a wow. hard time. Oh, he <laughs> would be. Man, <laughs> I was so back. close. But it really speaks to the idea that antitrust scrutiny is it an issue for the stock market uh, or for some of these big tech companies. We've seen in the past that a lot of those big tech investors, well, they look straight through it and looks like Amazon just did the same thing. It was yeah. down more than 1% earlier it in was. the session, to be fair. I promise you guys, it was a decliner at one point. A Bloomberg <laughs> scoop because of that, of course, the FTC eyeing up parts mm -hmm. of Amazon. The web services are part of the industry. It would seem about the shares just managing to bounce off their lows. I'll tell you what's also in the higher side is basically most currencies versus the US dollar. We did not need the haven trade as we on music came back in. We saw the fact that we got the Aussie dollar catch a bit up nine tenths of a percent. Some of these commodity related pairs doing well. British pound actually up seven tenths of a percent. Economic data there looking pretty rosy in terms of the actual size of the economy, not quite as dented by COVID-19 as many had anticipated. The Office of Nas National Statistics, to get my words out, they're saying actually the economy is only about less than two percent smaller than it was in 2019. Canadian dollar goes higher as oil goes higher. Let's have a look at the commodity space because WTI crude up 2.5%, still sub 80 bucks, but we're $72.92. That as the inventory levels coming in lower. There's some of the supply side being an issue here in the United States as we get that IEA reading. Brent crude up more than 2% at $75. So clearly a little bit of a bid into some of the metals. Zinc up 2.8%. And sovereign bonds, a mixed picture there, Taylor. Taylor, take us through what happened in the United States. Oh, Caroline, unch on the day. So oh. boring. No one cares. <laughs> no one listened to the bond market today. So here we'll just quickly bring you through it no no movement here but maybe the stability is something that we can take our cues from with the good economic data i know that carol you've talked a lot about this morning a federal reserve that is still on steady and on track to maybe complete that taper by march and nothing really any newsworthy to sway this market in either direction what's interesting too and taylor you were earlier uh on television talking about here we are though at the end of the year and that 10-year yield is still below two percent how remarkable considering I feel like we talked to a lot of market folks we talked to CEOs there's optimism going into into the new year and yet I'm just shocked that we haven't kind of pierced that level. And Chanelle, let me just quickly jump in here. We had Carly Garner on of DeCarly trading at around 315 or so and she said she's not crazy and thinking that it'll hit one percent before it goes mm. back up to hit two percent in part because of all the technical rebalancing everyone is so overweight equities that what happens the minute you rebalance and you get a flood of buyers yeah it's a great question because we know how sensitive this market is to that extremely low interest rate and the question is how quick do you then get to two and what deals are being done off the back of that? Interesting that Blackstone, you know, talking about doing some sales of in its portfolio, but it does feel there's been a little bit of merger action towards the end of close at, of the year, it would seem. And whether, therefore, companies still awash with cash, wanting to know how to put it to work at the moment, Kriti. Yeah, and Caroline, when it talks about really what the next catalysts are, I mean, yes, that's absolutely a component, but don't forget, we also have plenty of eco data, even on this kind of holiday thin trading week, even tomorrow, we have initial jobless claims, the PCE deflator, you Michigan sentiment. I wonder how much of that will actually play into the market, if at all, Carol. Well, I think what's going to be interesting, you're right, there's a slew of economic data tomorrow, and we will get some good reads, including, as you said, PCE, and certainly that is something that's watched closely by the Fed. Does it just confirm kind of the story that we're in? I mean, you you know, right? Tell her how everybody's like, we know we've got inflation. So do we get just another, another uh, number that confirms it or does it show any kind of weakening that maybe could start to build a new trend line? Yeah, any weakening, of course, given the concerns of some of this 
this uh, virus and the variant that mm. we've been talking about, except the CES is in person in Vegas. Yes. So we'll see you later. I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> but not everybody's going, right? Some of the big tech names have pulled out. Fair. And they're pretty good at virtual events, right? I mean, if you're a big tech company. Interesting that they've decided to stick that. Davos has been made yeah. virtual only. Some of the other key healthcare conferences, but clearly in Las Vegas, they feel the party can ride on. Let's go to Vegas. All right, let's go to Vegas. Well, I'm not going to go to Vegas, but I'm going to be home for the next week or so. So Merry Christmas, Aww, Happy Holidays, too. Happy New Year. Everybody stay safe, and I'll see you in the new year. All right, that's going to do it for our cross-platform coverage on radio, on TV, and YouTube. Catch us again, same time, same place tomorrow.